Hey everybody, episode four of How I Changed the Law. In this episode, I'm going to show you uh, the speech that I gave to the school board right after uh, my son was threatened to be shot and killed in school and they did nothing about it. And resulted in me uh, getting Arizona revised statute 15.341 and 15.512 uh, revised and uh, changed making mandatory reporters of all school administrators, uh, teachers, and faculty of threats or incidents of serious violence or death in Arizona schools. Uh, after the speech is a little media coverage that uh, picked up the story, uh, for which I was grateful. And uh, I hope you enjoy episode four of How I Changed the Law. Thanks for watching, everybody. Be good humans. Good facts that I believe are a direct violation of the mandates laid out in Arizona Revised Statute. 15341. Eric Kroger told me he interviewed the student who reported the threat, the student who made the threat, and one other student who had knowledge of the threat but was not a witness to the threat. In his own words, Eric Comer did not make any effort to confirm the facts with independent witnesses, yet made the decision on his own not to call the district, not to call the victim parents, or law enforcement. He did not even call the parent of the student who reported the threat and that was interviewed for over an hour. Again, fact in his own words. Further, Eric Comer lied to my wife as to why he did not call her back or myself. <laughs> he got what my wife perceived to be hostile and insultive and, and, and insinuating she questioned his integrity. Well, of course he did. He just lied to her and it was now almost 48 hours since my son was threatened to be killed and no, no call from the school. Teacher Mr. Moses overheard the threat and told the children, stop talking about that, I don't want to do the paperwork. On Monday, February 6th, Mr. Moses broke out puppets to explain to the kids how it was their fault that my son and two other children were threatened to be killed. The following day, he told my son, you're in this situation because you created it. On February, March 2nd, Mr. Moses made the statement to my son, I will blame you for whatever I want. Is this the culture of the school? How can students feel comfortable reporting to an administration that doesn't want to do the paperwork? It tells them that it's their fault when they're threatened to be killed and that they will blame the student for whatever whatever they want. When I spoke on February 23rd to Mitch Bonnet from the Director of Student Services at Paradise Valley Unified School District about the incident and tried to ask questions, he told me I don't want to be interrogated and would not give me a definitive answer when I asked would there be a review of the incident at a district level to ensure these mistakes don't happen in the future. It is my belief that had the student not told the parent who reported the incident to the police, this incident would have been swept under the rug. Further, I find the school's email and communication with the parents misleading with their insinuation that they contacted the police and the district and that this was a social media threat. They did not, it does not. This, is pro this propaganda was even continued uh, from the district yesterday with a similar response to media inquiry. <coughs> the school district has not publicly admitted short any shortcomings, but they did in a meeting this morning uh, in this process uh, and making every effort, in my opinion, to convey to the public and the parents that this process was handled properly. They did not. How can parents trust a school that lies to them, misleads them, and does not uh, promptly communicate uh, with them regarding uh, death or shooting threats. My conversations with Mr. Eric Conner and Mitch Van Ecken were recorded and I would be happy to provide them and make them available to the board if requested. I would also be happy to speak further with, with any board member regarding this experience. I am asking the board to take action against and terminate Mr. Comer and Mr. Moses for failure to report the incident as mandated by 1531 and provide parents with transparency as to what actions and steps uh, to, will be taken to ensure these outrageous mistakes will never happen again. Finally, I am not here to work against the district or the school. I am here to effect change, to ensure that the future incidents are handled appropriately within the law and in partnerships with the parents directly involved and with transparency to the public. Together, the parents, the schools, the district, and law enforcement must ensure these outrageous mistakes never happen again. Thank you for your time. In Parkland, we have told you about several threats against schools here in the Valley. Mountain Trail Middle School, that's in Paradise Valley, that's one of them. The parents say school officials did not alert police. At a school board meeting late last night, two fathers took the microphone saying their children were named in that threat, and a parent called Phoenix Police. 
Both bands say school leaders haven't done enough to send a message. Together, the parents, the schools, the district, and law enforcement must ensure these outrageous mistakes never happen again. This response to a threat on students' lives is not only disappointing, it is extremely appalling. We do have a response from the Paradise Valley School District saying that the school was aware of the threat and they're conducting an internal investigation. Uh, they do that when a parent contacts police. Now, you can read the entire response, how they handled this situation on abc15.com right now. Dirty dead. A threat to students not reported. Now there's a push to hold schools accountable to make sure every effort is made to make your child safe at school. ABC 15's Jamie Warren shows us how one parent has made it his mission to make a change. It's called House Bill 2119 and it's making its way here through the state legislature after a parent says his child was named in a shooting threat at Mountain Trail Middle School. Nobody from the school made an effort to contact the parents. And that was John Goodnow in March of 2018. He says not only were parents not notified, but police confirm they weren't either. There was no policy or procedure in place for these to even get reported. So good now, taking the issue to State Senator Nancy Bartow, who drafted House Bill 2119 and presented it to the Public Safety Committee. The need for direction may be there for other schools as well. Right now, there isn't a specific protocol. And there really isn't any kind of, say, penalty or any kind of teeth in terms of um, of holding somebody criminally accountable if they do not report this. And that's what this new bill would deal with. School administrators would have to contact police and parents of the students involved. The school board would have to enforce those procedures. And if any of this is ignored, they could get in trouble. The legislation doesn't say what that trouble would be. It's a safety of our children. And I just think there needs to be a strong penalty in there if they do not comply. If you think we could add a penalty successfully. Put some, put some um, I think I'm certainly open to that. For good now, he wants school officials to face criminal charges. If we as parents um, don't hold our schools, our school boards, our elected officials accountable, then, then nobody else will do it. The bill is now headed to the House floor for review. We'll be staying on top of this one and let you know if and when it passes. Reporting from the Arizona State Capitol, Jamie Warren, ABC 15, Arizona. Jamie, thank you. And to show you just how much gray area there is under the current law, last year the principal at a Globe Middle School was charged for failing to report an online threat. The district said they worked with the police department to hold students and staff accountable.